Hi everyone, it's Thursday, that means it's my favorite day of the week. It's time for Teenage Mutant Ninja Thursdays right here on Digital Charcuterie. If you are looking forward to the rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or the future films of the Ninja Turtles, because look, inevitably they're going to be coming, give us a subscribe because we talk about the Ninja Turtles every single Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time right here. And when news drops, we also talk about that. Today, I'm joined with Andrew Fantasio once again. Hey Andrew, thanks for coming. Hey, 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 I'm ready to rise like a turtle. That sounded Ooh. dirty. Speaking of which, last Friday, the trailer, the first look trailer for Rise of the... Well, it wasn't first look, but the first trailer for Rise of the TMNT uh, was delivered to us uh, from Ninja Turtles. It was definitely met with a lot of uh, mixed emotions from a lot of people. Some people are saying that their childhoods are ruined, much like The Last Jedi. And other people are saying, give it a chance. Where do you fall on this one? I liked it. I thought it was uh, it was a fun trailer. I was really surprised by how much I liked Leonardo in this trailer. <laughs> he was a lot of fun. He was the funniest one. Um, but overall, like it looks good. It it's it looks energetic. Uh, it's colorful. Uh, we saw a lot that I wasn't ex- like I wasn't expecting to see Draxum in the trailer or hear him talk. But it's all there. Everything's they gave us a lot. What did you think of John Cena's voice? I wouldn't have known that was John Cena had I not already known. Like, he, he sounds just like another cartoon villain. Like, it's like, oh, turtles, I'm going to stop. Like, I yeah. never would have guessed. No, it does sound, <laughs> it does sound like a, a generic, which is, and, and I don't mean this negatively, like a regular, everyday uh, voice for it. The overall tone um, was what I kind of expected when I released the images. It's a lot funnier than, I think, I shouldn't say funnier than I thought turtles would be because turtles are funny. Like the, they're mm-hmm. pretty funny. But this one more, it seems more along. It, it, well, let's just go into it. Look, you know, I've been saying for a while. It reminded me of uh, someone. I can't remember their name. Get mad at me when I say this. Whatever. Uh, I was comparing it to Teen Titans Go for a while, right? Like, hey, th- that. But that's my ten-year-old niece and my eight-year-old nephew who are obsessed with turtles. They also love Teen Titans Go, so I can see the artwork going there. Watching the trailer, I got a little bit of that. But the new DuckTales series really, really, that's what really knocked me over the head with. I was like, oh, this looks and feels like it lives in that world. It does. Uh, uh, the DuckTales thing really has this, it looks like the old Carl Barks comics, the way it's drawn. It's even got sort of like the, the ink dots uh, to certain backgrounds. And I mm-hmm. saw a little bit of that in this. Um, it, it keeps the energy without having to to move too much if that makes sense like it takes it can take a still image of a turtle who's not moving but make it look energetic and make it look like an old cartoon which i'm always down for yeah i, the, I saw this trailer a few times now the first time i saw it i thought it was hectic and crazy and i was like Ooh, i don't know if i'm gonna be able to sit through this i'm going to but I was like, I don't know. The, the next, the, the second time I saw it, I was a little more tore down. Now I'm actually used to it, and I kind of enjoy it. And I, and I like the voice work of all the turtles. Uh, but again, it is a little bit chaotic. Do you think adult, like the grown-up Ninja Turtle fans are going to dig on this? Are you going to, or do you see them being like, let's forget this exists and let's get a new Turtles movie out here sooner than later? I don't know. I think I'm still on the fence with that. And I think the big sort of tipping point to that is going to be April uh, because having an adult April interact with the turtles kind of balances that and, you know, gives adults, she's sort of like our gateway drug into the turtles, but because she's so young again, now that's kind of in jeopardy. So we really have to see the, the adult stuff is going to have to come from somebody else. Uh, and she's usually the only human who interacts with them. I don't think Casey's in this show from what I've seen so far. So maybe that's where John Cena comes in. Uh, maybe Splinter. I mean, Splinter has always been like an endless pool of comedy, whether he means to be or not. So I, as long as there's something in there that can reach out and, you know, take us grownups by the hand and be like, hey, listen, you know, this isn't kids stuff. This is all ages stuff. You're going to have fun here, too. Then, like, we, we really just have to see where that comes from. Yeah. Well, speaking of Splinter, he has a bit of a role in this where he says they can be wise, successful ninjas. But now, right now, which harkens back to the name Rise of the TMNT, Raphael being the leader for now, at least, this is an origin of origin stories. We know the origin stories of the Turtles, but we don't really know how they formed and became 
the Leo, Mikey, Donnie, and Raph that we know and love. This is the story of how they get from A or from B to C, I'll say. And we've never had that story before. You're right. Uh, we might even see, I don't know if they've ever shown this before, uh, we might even see the first time they tried pizza. Yeah. Oh, no, we saw that in the 2012 show. Oh, I still have to watch that show. Oh, Damn my it. God. <laughs> April's young in that one as well. But, no, they've tried, the first time they tried pizza is great on that show, actually. Really, oh, really. Like but that's something pizza. else they can... They can uh, <laughs> That's, that's the best one. <laughs> but th- that's something they could explore in this for sure. Uh, Peter wants them to go vegan. Maybe they'll go vegan in this. Oh, my God. I did not hear about that. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's uh, like a month old now. They want them to go vegan. For the most part, I think, look, from what we've seen in this is a show that is not designed for us. It is designed for the new age turtle fans which is what we've been talking about but at the same time if it does follow that ducktales trajectory of what it is some of the humor might be geared for a little bit more not mature but for more of like our age like so we appreciate it more but from this trailer mm-hmm. i wasn't really getting at the jokes seem more for kids i'm seeing my nieces and nephew uh, this weekend for easter and i'm totally going to watch this with them and see what their reaction is and talk about it next week because i'm very very curious because they love the turtles and and this looks like the stuff that they would watch well i i haven't watched a lot of teen show, but i've seen i think every episode so far of the ducktales show and that show a lot of times it will have me like literally like crying laughing so hard um the, I, something about the humor of that show just works every time now i don't know if that's because I'm a fan of the DuckTales from way back when, or if it's just the show in and of itself is so funny. But if it does as well as that, I think we're going to be okay. Yeah, that's what I think. I, I, I'm really curious to see these little pig guys in this trailer also. I don't know <laughs> what they are. Because I don't think that's Meat Sweats. I think we see Meat Sweats later on getting electrocuted. Uh, but I'm not I, sure. I, he might be a human. Uh, that's in, what I'm hoping. Right off the bat. That is what uh-huh. I am hoping. It looks like the the colors really pop, which I like. It's very colorful. Uh, Very, yeah. What do you think of the animation style? I like it. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm old school. I'm partial to 2D hand-drawn looking animation. Uh, I really like when they mix like 2D hand-drawn and they throw in some CG. I think Futurama did that beautifully, like especially in the later seasons. It just, it looks gorgeous. Every episode of Futurama looks beautiful. Um, And this looks like it might kind of start doing some of that. Uh, And it's, it's a, like the color palette is so much brighter than like the 2003 Ninja Turtles, which was kind of more subdued. Um, So I, I'm interested in just seeing the visuals. Like this, from what I saw in this trailer, this looks like the kind of show you could just watch it on mute and still just enjoy how good it looks. Yeah, totally. That's why I, th- I really think they're going after that Teen Titans, DuckTales crowd. And that's, you know, we talked about this a little while ago. Is that's where animation seems to be going for, for cartoons, for, for telev- televised cartoons. Uh, move, the theater, theatrical is still 3D animation, obviously. But this is what it is. It, it might be cheaper to produce, I'm not sure. But kids are drawn to it. It's very colorful. Uh, there's a lot of movement, a lot of sound, a lot of pow, 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 pow. What, mm-hmm. From the trailer, we didn't see too much of the weapons being used. You think we're going to see some? And how soon until Raph gets his sigh? Ooh. Uh, well, I like the idea of the Tonfa sticks. You're right. I think there's a lot more he could do with it because otherwise he can't stab people, like you said. Uh, so the sticks he can kind of play around with more. Um, I think, yeah, they're saving the weapon stuff for later. And I like the idea of we have in our head what the Ninja Turtles is supposed to be, you know, like, oh, he's supposed to have a side, Leo's supposed to be leaving. Like, we have that old canon in our head. So I like the idea of having to earn it throughout the show, piece by piece by piece. Mm-hmm. I really like the sound of that. Um, so I'll, I will take that if that's the case, if, if it's a matter of just like, okay, well, you know, we're going to start here. And maybe they don't try pizza till like episode seven, but when they do, it's a big deal. And maybe Raph doesn't, you know, bust out the sigh until the finale, but we make a big deal of it. I love when shows do that. So I could totally get on board for something like that. Yeah, that's what I'm really hoping. I'm hoping, like I just said a little bit ago, is that I'm hoping we get to see the turtles become the turtles that we know. We know they're going to end up here. We know that this is their, their end plan. 
but I want to see them earn earn the names that we know and love. I want to see them become those characters. I think, you know, Leo's very jokey in the trailer, but what if he matures throughout the series and all of a sudden he becomes mm-hmm. the hardened leader that we know? Raphael, hot, very, very hot head. He's like, I have to lead this. But then as the series goes on, he realizes he's not the leader. That's not his strong suit. So he kind of understands because there's a way to play the turtles the same, but more over the top and then have them gradually become the turtles that we all know. It's it's funny. In, in this trailer, Leo reminded me of Raphael from the 80s cartoon where he was just sarcastic you know he's standing in the background like he gives zero f's about the situation like he's not you know the typical Raphael where he's like oh I'm a mean bruiser he's just like wow that took a long time so what's next like he was almost like a Groucho Marx kind of character and Leo kind of really brought that to the table here so that that gets I'm more excited for Leonardo than any of the other turtles and and that's usually not the case so I really like that they did that with his character. I'm actually, I really like the design of Leo, too, to be honest mm-hmm. about that. But yeah, this trailer was, I think what it was, it was like a coming up party. Like, hey, we're here. This is what we're all about. This is the tone we want to set. Are you with us? And we'll find out. We're going to find out in September if they are. I'm going to come back next week and talk about whether or not my 10-year-old niece, my 8-year-old nephew, and my 5-year-old niece, what they thought of us because they've seen the movies in the theater with me. Well, not the 5-year-old. She was like 2. But the other, they saw the Michael Bay movies in the theater. They love those. They've watched the 80s cartoon, 2012 cartoon. I don't know if they've seen the, the other one or not, but they've seen a lot. of. They've seen the TMNT movie, obviously, the old movies. They love all Turtles. I want to see where they are when they watch this one, how they react to it, and how they respond because that... I think that's the, I look, you can argue me all you want, but I kind of feel like that's the demographic they're going for. I think your five-year-old niece is going to watch this trailer and say, they ruined my childhood. <laughs> Could you imagine? That, that, would tell us. <laughs> that would be the best. We got one more thing to talk about on the show today before we wrap things up. Uh, you and I are doing a video on your channel and on my channel at 8 o'clock right here on Digital Charcuterie. We are doing the Easter eggs of Ready Player One. On yours, we're doing the differences between them both. But one of the coolest Easter eggs that we talk about in Ready Player One are the Michael Bay Ninja Turtles. They're here. Uh, they, they show up for a split second. Uh, but they are 100% the Bay Turtles. Uh, we've got these four little kids doing karate and you zoom in and it's them. Uh, I thought they were, that was a really beautiful welcome little addition. And Holiday would absolutely be a fan of the turtles, so it makes sense. Oh, 100%. And th- yeah, that was so, yeah, you see these kids fighting on the street. And then when we go into the Oasis, they're the Ninja Turtles. And they are the Michael Bay Ninja Turtles. We were questioning why it would be the Bay's Turtles for a little bit. But I think because of the age of the kids, it kind of makes sense. But it would have been nice to have seen, uh, like, I, the movie never does this, so it wouldn't have made sense. But an 8-bit, like, original Nintendo, NES, uh, Konami, Ninja Turtle, Walk in the Street. 8-bit, you know, that would that's what I would have loved right there. Well, what what was so great about how they did the, like, the fact that they chose the Bay Turtles was, and we keep forgetting, even in the book, when Halliday made the Oasis, it was, like, 2025. Yeah. So he was still devouring pop culture up until 2025, he would have seen those Bay movies 100% and been like, yeah, sure, put them in the game. So it all makes sense from a logical standpoint. Like it, it didn't, them being there wasn't like, a, you know, it didn't oh, take yeah. us out of it. Uh, just because they weren't retro didn't mean uh, they didn't belong there. It was great to see. I, like You and I both got a huge kick out, out of that for sure. Because I absolutely like, hopefully though, between now and 2025, there's no more Ninja Turtle movies in the theaters. <laughs> but at the same time, I would like at least three in that time. <laughs> I, you know, it would be awesome if this movie somehow sparks them to make a third one in that series. But Imagine. it's a sequel to Out of the Shadows. But they just fix the turtles' faces a little bit. Just make them look more like what we're used to. Make them more presentable to us. And we will buy in. I promise we will buy in. And hire us to write it and we'll work for dirt cheap and it'll be good. I promise. I'll, I'll, I promise. I'll do, I'll do it for free. My novel's coming out at the end of the year. I'll do it for free. I'm a published author. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yep. I will also do it for slightly more than free. I'll do it for like a hundred bucks. <laughs> it's still a steal. It's still a steal, it Paramount. Is. Come on. <laughs> Nickelodeon, Paramount, Michael Bay, Mikey. Hey, hey. 
Platinum Dooms, give me a holler. All right, guys, that's it for uh, Turtles Thursday this week. We're keeping it short this week. Next week, we're back because Donatello's Bane, and we got to talk about that. Or Bane uh, is Donatello. Well, Donatello's Bane. That's what it is. Uh, <laughs> so we got to talk about that next week. Andrew, tell everybody where they can find you at. You can find me on my channel, Andrew Fantasia, where I have my shows thumb together and real deal. And I talk about movies and lots of other sexy entertainment things. Yeah, so check him out also later today, our early player one Easter egg, 8 o'clock p.m. on this channel. It'll be up on Andrew Fantasia's channel as well. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Thanks for spending your Thursday with me and with Andrew. And until next time, cowabunga! Cowabunga!